today we're going to be making these three adorable Easter arrangements. Hi, welcome to another video. I told you I had endless ideas for Easter. Today we're going to be making this beautiful Easter egg tree, this adorable Easter basket arrangement, and these cute cabbage rose centerpieces. So let's get started. So we're going to be making an Easter basket arrangement, but you don't see a basket before you because I'm going to do an Easter basket my way. What I have here is a large malamine white bowl. You can do a ceramic bowl, you can not do a bowl, but I, I chose it because I like how large it is and I do like the white and I'll show you why because we're going to be using this little white bunny in there. Um, instead of buying a traditional basket, I figured I will create a basket out of this bowl. What we're going to use for basket handles are these beautiful curly willow branches. Now occasionally at the flower market I'll be lucky and they'll have these um, leafed out curly willow. And it's really beautiful. It's so spring because that pale green that I love. And so it's basically curly willow branches are very pliable because they're young and they've got a little bit of foliage in it. So this is what we're going to use to create our handle. Okay, so I've got three pieces here that are about the right length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it in the floral foam on this side here. And it's always a hit or miss, so be patient with me with this one. Oh, and I've got uh, two pieces of floral foam fitted in this bowl right here. Okay, so I've got three of these going. And then I'm going to do three on this side. I have three stems of the um, curly willow. That's about the same as this side lengthwise. We're going to put them in. These are nice because they're slightly pliable. So hopefully it can do what I want it to do. Okay. We're just putting it in like edge of the foam going in like this. And then I have a piece of cover wire that I'm going to use to bind these together. I'm making sure that they overlap and then we're going to bind it with um, this covered wire. It could be just any kind of wire you want to use. I like the covered wire because it's a little easier on the hands and um, it's, it's like a nice uh, pliable wire that's easier to twist than a real wire wire. And I buy them as spools and they're really wonderful. So we got our handle and um, you could kind of adjust it a little bit. Sometimes I'll poke it in a little further if I want a more rounded shape to this. And I'm pretty happy with the shape of this. And to reinforce this line, I have two faux branches. This is just a really pretty twiggy faux branch that I bought um, to use in my spring arrangements. Um, I do love flowering branches, but they're hard to use. They definitely will be hard to use this way because they're not so pliable and it's always tricky to get them to bloom perfectly. So I'm okay to use some faux branches. I'm just going to repeat that line. I'm going to poke it into the foam sideways right next to the willow. Got two pieces here that I sort of pre-bent into shape and we just put it right next to the um, curly willow. I have another piece of binding wire that I'm going to tie this to the willow. The reason I put these the uh, faux branches in is just to have a stronger line um, visually. The little white flowers, um, you can see this, this um, basket handle better once you have some of these white flowers on there. And I think it's very pretty and it ties that white container together with this. So that's what we have and that's what we're going to use as our basket handle. Now, when you're doing large arrangements like this, when you have a very large opening, it's always kind of tricky how you are going to fill it up and still have it look nice because you want it to be in proportion with your handle and the size of your bowl. Now, I already know I'm going to be using this little white rabbit that I bought at Hobby Lobby. This was like, you know, $10, so 40 it was like a $6 bunny. It came with uh, like a 
little bow with like fake flowers on it I found really tacky. So I just cut all that off and put a little simple bow on there for him. And I'm going to elevate him off of the floral foam with this a little uh, glass dish upside down. This little glass dish is actually the creme brulee cups from Costco. And we save these and they're great for, you know, for melted butter or whatever, but I've got tons of these. Um, the reason I wanna elevate the bunny is because the bunny is sort of papery. And I'm afraid if it wicks up water from the um, floral foam, it's gonna mess up the bunny. So we're gonna have the bunny in the middle and that's where we're gonna have him. So kind of just know that's where he's going to be. And then we're going to start designing. Now, the way to think about a large arrangement is in sections. So what I would do is think of this in four sections. You've got your bunny in the middle and you've got four quadrants here, 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 right? And you're going to decide what is the front and uh, what is the back or is it going to be all sided? I'm going to try to make this um, look like spring flowers kind of growing around the bunny. So it's not going to be a traditional arrangement where we're going to put stems in um, like a flower arrangement. It's more of a vegetative style. But we do have a lot of foam we have to cover. So we're going to have to use some greenery and hydrangeas to cover our mechanics. So I'm going to, re I'm going to keep the bunny here just so I have a visual of uh, what I'm doing and not go too high. But um, if he gets in the way, I'll remove it just once we start designing. So I'm gonna start with some white hydrangeas. White hydrangeas are your friend because they're pretty neutral and they do cover a lot of foam without you having to green in like a lot. So I'm gonna just put a stem of white hydrangea here. Gonna have another white hydrangea. And it, sh it should be pretty neutral, the white hydrangea. You're not gonna see it. I mean, you're gonna see it, but it doesn't add like a big uh, color or element to this. I'm trying to think where I'm gonna put the tulips. I'm gonna make sure we dodge where we're gonna put the tulips. So maybe I'll put a uh, white hydrangea here. Let me just do that for now. I can always add more. Um, and then I'm gonna use some of these orange tulips. These orange tulips are sort of small because they are so fresh, I just bought them. So they haven't bloomed out yet, but I took them out of the pack and let them kind of do their uh, flopping, if that makes any sense. See how the tulips are kind of um, leaning over? And I wanted, to, I wanted that look because I wanted it to cascade out the bowl. So I'm gonna do a bunch here. I'm gonna group them, but I obviously can't put them all in at once. So I'm gonna group them in one section here and then I'll repeat it on the other side. So I'm gonna cascade out this way. And I'll turn this around later so you can see. So basically we're just cascading the tulips out. These tulips I bought at Trader Joe's. They were very inexpensive. I think it was 20 stems of tulips for $10.99. Can't beat that. Now they're not very big, but um, I think they'll be fine in this arrangement. I have it cascading out. I'm gonna do it the same on this side at a, um, on this side. So you see your four quads. So that's one quad. This is another quad. I'm doing it on a diagonal so that this arrangement could be viewed from all sides. So whenever you're doing larger arrangements, and I'll be doing some large arrangements to show you in later videos, but you always want to think in terms of sections so you're not intimidated by the size of your the foam that you have to cover. Okay, and just let it be kind of wild. You do want to cut them a little shorter so it doesn't, you know, come out too much. And I'm okay with one just going up in a different angle. Now they might move on you during the week when you have this arrangement on your table because tulips do move around and they do grow after they've been cut. Kind of crazy, huh? 
Okay. So I don't know how many stems I have over here, but I feel like I have more on this side than the other side. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to have it be perfectly symmetrical. That's not what we're going for. Okay. So that's what we have. We've got the tulips cascading from both sides. Okay, got a few shorter ones here. Okay, and that's the tulip part. And then have these beautiful hyacinths. I have pink hyacinths and uh, these purpley blue hyacinths. Now hyacinths are very hard to put into foam because they've got a thick fleshy stem. So what you do is you need to impale the hyacinth with a stake. So I'm just using my wired picks because they're a good length and um, you know we're not using that many of them. But I also have hyacinth stakes, which are just longer stems of woody uh, stakes like this without the wire. Okay. So first you have to decide how tall you want your hyacinths and where you want to place it. So I have the bunny here. I've got my tulips here. I don't want it too tall. So I'm going to cut my hyacinths a little bit shorter. Think about this. And then you're going to put your stake up the stem of the hyacinth. Cut it, cut the stake, leave a little bit of the stake to help you poke into the foam. And then you can work the whole thing into the foam and the hyacinths will stay upright for you. So I'm doing a grouping of hyacinths here. Maybe three, I'm going to cut it short, maybe different lengths, but um, kind of like it's growing out of the, uh, out of the foam. Oh, it's hard to do this. I'm splitting the hyacinth a little bit. It should be okay. Okay. And then I'll do a third one. Maybe the third one would be a little longer like this. Okay. Nice thing about wooden stakes and, uh, and not wire is you can cut it with your pruning shears and not worry about getting a notch in there. Okay. So this is what we have. We have your, your purple hyacinths over here. Then I'm going to repeat it on this side, but with a pink hyacinth. So it doesn't have to be totally the same. I think it's, it would be pretty to have a different color on this side. And I'm just going with sort of pastel colors for Easter as my main color theme. Okay. Then do the same here. I'm going to have to have pink hyacinth here. I think I have one that's more bloomed out. I'll go ahead and use this one. One more stem here. Maybe this one a little longer because those two are kind of short. Now, the hyacinth stems are like calla lily stems, sort of. Uh, Fleshy and, uh, and, and but not hollow, but solid. Okay, so we got our pink hyacinths and our blue hyacinths added in. And then I'm going to use other flowers. Now, what else are we going to use? So I've got some little daffodils here. Now, my last video, I think I told you that daffodils are toxic to other plants. So I bought these several days ago, waiting for them to bloom. And every day I recut the stems and put it in water to let all the toxic sap out. And right now I don't feel much sap. And I do have an arrangement that I did a few days ago um, with, with daffodils mixed with other flowers. And it seems not to be toxic to the other flowers after you've done this treatment. So you want to basically condition your daffodils, buy them very tight every day, recut the stem, let that slimy toxic, um, sap out into the water, change the water every day. And then by the time you're ready to use them, they should not uh, kill your other flowers.
So I'm going to do a cluster of daffodils here with the blue hyacinths. I'm adding everything into cl in clusters because in nature, that's how they're going to grow, right? You're going to have your daffodils all together, and then you're going to have your hyacinths all together. You're not going to have one hyacinth, one daffodil, you know, growing in nature that way. I might cut them a little shorter because I feel like it's going to overpower our bunny. I'm actually going pretty short with the daffodils because I do want the hyacinths to be the taller element here. Now in reality, your hyacinths are going to be shorter than your daffodils in nature. But hey, we're not trying to be perfectly mimicking nature. Okay. Okay. So that's why I have here, I have a cluster of the yellow daffodils. The reason I chose to, uh, to add the yellow daff daffodils next to the purple blue hy hyacinths is it's just a nice bright contrast because they're on opposite sides of the color wheel. And then I have three purple anemones here. And so instead of doing more yellow daffodils here at the base of the pink hyacinths, we're going to do the anemones. The anemones have a hollow stem. This seems to be pretty, pretty strong, but if they're not strong enough, you can also put a stake or a wire in them. So I'm adding three of these anemones at the base of the pink hyacinths here. Okay, I'll show you what it looks like. So visually, we've got the, the, um, the daffodils here and the anemones there. So we've added elements, you know, on both sides, but they don't have to be identical elements. That's all I'm trying to convey. All right. I have some ranunculus here. They're short because um, a lot of them are, were just flopping over. So I'm going to add some anemones. I'm trying to think what colors are good, where I'm going to go with. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll just mix it up. I've got some whites and pinks and blush. So I'm going to add some of these in. I'm trying to think where we're going to add this in though. See, I don't always know what I'm doing. You know what? I'm going to add those in later because they're kind of short. I've got some really pretty, um, Ami or sort of like false Queen Anne's lace here. And that I'm going to add in to cover our foam. We still have a lot of foam showing, but I feel like if I added like more hydrangeas, it'll be too heavy in feeling. So I'm going to add some of this in. It takes up about as much space as our, um, as our, um, hydrangeas, but it's a little bit, um, because it's so lacy, it's, uh, it, it's less of less visual weight. Maybe I'll save that space for the, the ranunculus. Okay. So I've added in some of the, um, the frilly kind of false Queen Anne's lace in here just to help me cover the foam without adding more like large weight, weighty uh, elements to it. And then I now am going to add my ranunculus. I think I'll go ahead and add this really beautiful pink one right next to the bunny so it could be seen. Add a very pretty white one here. and maybe a peachy one right here. Okay. So that's what we have right here. I'm going to do the same on this side. Add in the white one here. 
pink one here. And ranunculus are hollow stemmed, so if you find your ranunculus kind of um, flopping over, you can always just send a wire through the center of it. Okay. I've got a couple more stems of ranunculus I'm going to add here, just because there seems to be a lot of empty space right here. Okay. So that's what we have on this side. Okay. Okay, there's the bunny. And I think I'm mostly done with adding the flowers. Now I'm going to green in. You see how I didn't start with lots of greenery? Because I didn't want to overwhelm this, and I knew we were adding a lot of these fleshy stemmed arrangements. So now I'm going to go ahead and green in. Um, I've got a lot of different greenery. This is really pretty. I cut from the garden this morning. It's um, a type of scented geranium. I chose it because I like this pale green, pale spring green. It's so pretty. I'm going to cut it kind of short and kind of set it deep in the foam here on the edge. I don't want, you know, a lot of greenery, but just a little bit just to hide our foam. Okay. I'm going to do the same on this side. And I've got other filler flowers and greenery to use. This is nice because it'll cover a big chunk of that foam for us. And it adds a very pretty um, element, I think. And I also have some tree fern. I know, I know, I always talk about how I don't love ferns. I love ferns as a plant. I just don't like seeing leather fern in every arrangement. You know, that's kind of the florist go-to. This is something called tree fern. It's very frilly. I, I don't know, I just think it looks nice with the, the, the spring flowers that we chose. That's why I bought some tree fern. And I'm just cutting it shorter, and I'm going to add it as a little sprig like this. See how that's kind of pretty and frilly? I don't know. I do like that. And I love maidenhair fern, which I grow, but they're tricky to use. You have to, if you can believe it, um, use a match to, uh, or, or lighter, to burn the ends, to singe it, to use maidenhair fern, and you can mist it. They do sell them in bags. I mean, they're just kind of tricky to use, so I don't use them often, and they don't last very well in an arrangement, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, so we've got our arrangement mostly done. Now, I feel like this side here is almost too tightly clustered or something. I think I might pull this... Queen Anne's lace out a little bit and maybe add some elements to it just to uh, loosen it up because, you know, the shape of our bowl kind of dictates this, this arrangement, but I still do want a little something cascading out. So I think I'm going to add some of this white wax flower as kind of a filler and just to loosen things up. I'm just going to add it around the perimeter of our arrangement. Not just the perimeter, but, you know, just kind of on the edges. I don't want to go in between the flowers necessarily. Like here. I think what it is is the hydrangeas are making this feel a little bit tight. So I'll add some of the wax flower on the edges so that the hydrangeas don't look so tight. And it'll also help cover some foam on the side. I love wax flower. It's um, at its prime right now. It's sort of a cold weather filler flower. It's available year round at the flower market, I would say. And it's really long lasting. So we use it often for boutonnieres and corsages because it lasts great out of water too. Okay, see how that loosens it up a little bit? I'm gonna do the same on this side, see where it needs a little bit of something frilly and pretty. Okay. 
So I've designed this as a two-sided arrangement so that it could be a very elaborate and large centerpiece if you've got a big table and you want to use it for Easter. Or you could design it as a one-sided uh, basket arrangement if you're going to be using it um, more like on a buffet or a sideboard for Easter. So it kind of depends on how you're going to be using this. It's definitely easier to do this as a one-sided arrangement. Okay. I think we're mostly done. I'm trying to think anything else we need to add in this. Does it look complete? It looks pretty complete. I do like the colors and how they're different on both sides. Equal visual weight, but a little bit different uh, elements. And we got the little bunny, the white. I think that ties it all together very nicely. So this is my interpretation of an Easter basket, a beautiful lush arrangement in a vegetative style with a cute little bunny and um, a created handle basket. Okay, so you all know that I love going shopping and getting ideas from um, home goods and places like that. So I found these little Malamine bowl and saucer sets at home goods the other day. It was $15 for a set of four saucers and four bowls. And of course, I'm gonna use it to make a flower arrangement. Um, this is another part of our Easter um, tablescape arrangement that I'm going to do. And it's going to be one of the simplest arrangements. We don't have a lot to work with in terms of size. So we're going to do three of these arrangements. And I just have a little bit of floral foam in here. And I figured, well, this looks like a cabbage leaf. And why not use these big, beautiful English style cabbage roses? So we're going to use these roses, some of these incredible, I don't even know what to call it. Um, watermelon, pink, and or coral, and green ranunculus. So it's going to be a study in textures. We're not going to have a lot of lines. It's going to be a clustered arrangement, but with all these lush, incredible textures. And it's going to be set off by our little green leaf saucer and bowl. So the greenery I'm going to use, we're going to use just a little bit because we have so much greenery already, right, in the built-in with the bowl and the saucer, is the scented geranium that looks like kale almost, kind of vegetative looking. And I figure this texture will work great in this arrangement. I'm just gonna put a little bit of greenery in here, not even, just to have a little bit of different texture. It's not really so much to cover the foam because we've got all these large uh, flowers we're gonna use in here. So sometimes it's fun to use large flowers in small containers. And it, uh, it, it creates a really lush and interesting look. So I'm just going to cut these really short. These are these amazing pink expression roses. They look like a garden rose, like the David Austin's I grow, in this beautiful peachy, corally pink that I love. We're going to use two of these roses per, uh, per little arrangement. Just cut it really short and set it down here. And then we're going to use one of these beautiful ranunculus here. See all these fun, lush textures? Because it's going to be viewed close up so you can see all these great details, right? So I mean, we're almost done right here. I'll take a look and see what we else we need. I also have these red anemones. But I think, I don't know, is this going to be too big in here? I think so. So I think I'm going to pass on the red anemones and maybe just do another stem of that um, beautiful ranunculus. Okay, and this one I'm going to do a little higher, let it stick out a little bit. And then I've got the side buds. I'm going to cut a side bud and use it in here. So that we have a little bit of a dimension. It's just kind of a interesting materials and textures in this without a lot of uh, fuss, really easy. And as a little filler or uh, just add a little frilliness to this so it doesn't look so tight, I've got these little tiny um, Queen Anne's lace. OK, 
Okay. These are great. I was happy to find these little little uh, Queen Anne's lace in addition to the big ones that I use in the Easter basket. Okay. Let's do, see if I can want someone on this side here. Maybe in the middle here. Okay, and that's it. I'm done. Put over here. I'm going to do two more. Pretty much the same. We have two of our big, beautiful pink expression roses. Oh, forgot to do the greenery. I'll add that in now. Just using the very tips of these, the, the, the most beautiful top part of this range of this greenery. It's really just for that texture. And it'll cover a little bit, but we almost don't need it, right? Because our roses cover. Okay. Here on this side. Okay. I wonder if we could do anemone in this one instead of the ranunculus. No, I don't like that color with it as much. We're going to go ahead with the ranunculus. This ranunculus is so beautiful, so unusual. I think it goes so beautifully in this arrangement where we can really see its texture. A little bud, like a smaller stem of this. Okay, then I'm going to add in some more of this little frilly Queen Anne's lace. So pretty with that little bits of green. I think I'm going to make this a little shorter, sticking out in a weird way. Looks great. Move this rose over to fill in that space. Okay. Let's see. Do we have a bud we can use, another bud. Yeah, we can use this one right here. It's sort of green and white, so pretty. Okay, this one's done. Now we have our last one to do. See how fast this comes together? We have a really fun um, little container like this. And this will work in uh, your summer arrangements too. It's, it's, I think it's beautiful holding these garden style roses. Let me use it again. I'm also going to use it for salsa and guacamole. <laughs> I think these are going to be great for entertaining these little bowls. So cute. Okay. Now we have some more of these roses. We have a larger stem and a sh smaller stem here. Let's do the larger stem first. Have a set down deep. Okay. Add a stem of greenery here. Some of these side buds. Just get 
give some interesting dimension. Queen Anne's Lace. These would be fun if we did three arrangements that were different too. I just really love this material, these textury roses and ranunculus with this bowl. I don't know, it just kind of spoke to me. Let's see, does this need any more greenery? That's good. How about this one? Well, this one could use a little piece here. So we have our three cute little cabbage arrangements. Uh, I put it on this short grass runner that I bought on Amazon that I think would be really fun to use for entertaining. And I'm going to put some little bunnies, little ceramic bunnies that I bought from Hobby Lobby, of course. Little white bunnies. I think it's cute. And they'll, it breaks up all this green. And it's like our little Easter tablescape, right? You could probably put um, candles and whatever else you want around here. And I'm going to really enjoy using these little um, bowls and saucers for lots of other arrangements this summer. So this project is more of a silk flower project. We're using faux materials today, and we're going to make a beautiful Easter egg tree with white cherry blossoms. What I have here is a really beautiful container and a light green crackle glaze. All I've done is fill it with dry foam, taped it down with floral tape, and just kind of covered the opening of the container with some moss. The reason I'm doing that is I don't want to have to heavily green in. And um, we're going to start, though, with some greenery. I bought these beautiful faux um, maidenhair fern from Hobby Lobby. And the color and the texture is very realistic, so I'm, I'm okay to use it. So I'm just going to put this large stem in. I'm going to do it on the side here and kind of cover our foam uh, or the opening and just kind of create sort of a pretty greenery there. And I have another sprig of it here, this beautiful maidenhair fern. I'm going to do it on the diagonal here and then kind of spread it out so that it kind of covers the opening of our container, but still stays kind of airy and pretty. And I think that might be enough greening in. I'll, I've got other sprigs. We'll see if we need it later on. And that's all I'm doing, just kind of creating sort of a nice um, green nest here. Part of it is just scale. We're going to be using very tall cherry blossom uh, branches, and I don't want it to look top heavy. And this kind of helps create a larger um, base. Now I have 10 stems of white cherry blossom that I actually bought from Amazon, and they're very good quality and very inexpensive. So I will put a link in the description for these, and I was pleasantly surprised. Now for me, faux flowers, are awful if the colors are wrong. So what I'm going to do is um, put some of the taller cherry blossoms in the center here. And so with white cherry blossoms, you're kind of safe, right? Because um, white is white, as long as it's not a weird white. And these are wonderful. If you look up close, they even look realistic. The stamens and the fact that they're on a beautiful twiggy brown stem. So this is actually passes my faux flower uh, <laughs> test. I'm not a big fan of faux flowers, but they definitely have their uses. Now it would be wonderful to be able to do this with real flowers, but it's unrealistic, right? And this will last you a long time. And we're going to make an Easter egg tree, but this could be a beautiful spring arrangement. You could take the eggs off after Easter and you'll still have a beautiful cherry blossom statement arrangement. So I'm just kind of grouping all the tall branches in the center of the vase here. And this, the stems seem very sturdy, so I, I'm not too worried about it. Flopping over. Okay, just kind of going around in a circle. I've got four stems in. I'm going to put in six stems of the tall cherry blossom here in the middle. Now you could do more or less depending on how large a show you want. 
and also the size of your vase. It needs to be in proportion. You could do a smaller vase and do uh, fewer branches of the cherry blossom. But I wanted to make something really spectacular. These are relatively inexpensive um, for such high quality silk. So this is going to be a real beautiful statement piece in your home, even after Easter. Or you could just make this and not put Easter eggs on. But since we are doing Easter designs, I figure I show you um, it with some Easter eggs. Then I have four pieces I've cut shorter. We're going to add these in down here so that it doesn't look so empty. So it transitions nicely. I'm adding in the uh, shorter pieces here. And I just have four, so for a total of 10 stems of these white cherry blossoms. The nice thing about faux flowers is you can adjust it however you want, right? You can bend the branches to create uh, the shape you want. our last piece here. Okay. Okay. We're mostly done with the flower arranging part of this. I now I have some of these mossy foliage. I, I almost think we don't need it. I could use some, but I think we don't need it. I kind of like how the maidenhair fern is sort of airy and light down here. I don't want to stuff it up with too much greenery, so I'll put this to the side. Then we have these beautiful gold leaf eggs. I bought these at Hobby Lobby. They're very inexpensive, and all I did was glue a piece of ribbon to it. These were not ornaments, but they're super lightweight, and I love that they're in these beautiful pastel colors with gold leaf on them. So, And they're, the main thing is they're super lightweight, and so they'll work on our cherry blossom branches. So I'm just going to put these egg ornaments on here. Just kind of spacing them out. There's all these beautiful pastel colors. There are pink ones, pale green ones, robin's egg blue and white, and they all have that little bit of gold leafing on them. Really gorgeous eggs. Now, if you have children or grandchildren who hand paint and decorate beautiful Easter eggs, that's even more fun for you to put them on the Easter egg tree but uh, I'm just going with these eggs because <laughs> I did not decorate Easter eggs. I'm just gonna put them, you know, however you like throughout the, um, the arrangement. Reminds me of Christmas. And if there's any branch that needs a little bit of straightening, you could go ahead and do that. That's the beauty of faux arrangements. If it kind of comes down too much, you could always straighten it up and it'll stay. So yeah, these are really nice and um, I'm shocked at how inexpensive they were and how um, nice they look. So you can afford to do this big dramatic arrangement and they'll stay all spring. Okay, we have a last one here. I guess I'll put it in the middle here. So we have a little bit of gold shining through and that's it. Super easy to do. And I think it's a really beautiful and elegant Easter egg tree. And the great thing is once Easter's over, you could take the eggs off and you've got this dramatic and beautiful cherry, white cherry blossom spring arrangement um, for a focal point in your room. So I hope you enjoy the series of Easter videos. 
I've given you a lot of ideas and inspiration for Easter, so I hope you go out and make one of these. Happy Easter to you and your family. And as always, please like and subscribe, and I love to hear from you. Send me a comment, and I will see you in my next video.